also overcame um, with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. May the Lord add his blessing trials and difficulties and battles that you should have to fight lukewarmness at the end. I, I marvel at that. And if you can overcome that one, he'll grant to sit with him on his throne. And isn't it amazing that the last one is lukewarmness? You would think that lukewarmness, you would battle it somewhere along the line, somewhere else along the line, but it's at the end where the, the lukewarmness at the end. For instance, David, when he was a young man, fought Goliath, he fought the Philistines, he fought battles and struggles, but at the end, when he felt like, well, now I've fought enough, uh, he stayed home. And that's where he looked over the wall at Bathsheba and got into all of his difficulties. It was when he felt like, well, I've battled enough. Uh, that's when the danger point comes in, lukewarmness, the last, the most dangerous territory to be on. So I want you to notice what God says here. It's rather interesting to me. He says that I would that you were either hot or cold. And because you're lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. God is, isn't this interesting? It seems to me like lukewarmness would be better than cold. Now, doesn't that seem like that? But God said I'd rather you were cold. Now, that's interesting, I think. Uh, in other words, to a person who's gotten saved and they're moving along and they've reached the state where they simply have said, well, I've gone far enough, I, I just won't go any farther. They're in a state of lukewarmness. God said, I would rather that you were cold. In other words, what he's saying is, I would rather that you weren't, you are not, you weren't as far along as you are. I would rather that you weren't as spiritual as you are. I would rather you were cold. Now, isn't that something that God should say to us? I'd rather you weren't as spiritual as you are. Now, I marvel at that. I remember hearing L.A. Maxwell some years ago, this great preacher, this great man of Canada, a man of faith, and went and started a Bible school in Canada and was a, trained many missionaries for the mission field. I remember hearing him preach one time and he said this. He said, if you're praying only five minutes a day, why don't you quit it? Now, he didn't say, why don't you increase it? He said, why don't you quit it? He knew that if he said, why don't you increase it, he wouldn't have affected them at all. But he said, if, why don't you quit it? He said, if you'll quit it, you might get under conviction. <laughs> you might, he said, get under conviction if you'll quit it, and then pray like you ought to pray. So God is saying, I would rather that you were cold rather than lukewarm, for lukewarmness is a hindrance to your going any farther. Whenever you reach that spot, uh, you don't want to go any farther, you're lukewarm. Whenever you reach the spot where you feel like, now look, I have gone far enough, we've gone far enough in this church, and I think we've reached the spot, we don't have to go any farther. I want you to know you're in danger of lukewarmness right there. Lukewarmness can set in at any stage in the Christian experience. I don't care how hot you are today, you could be lukewarm tomorrow. No one can say, now that I'm past lukewarmness, that I don't need to worry anymore. I want you to know you're never past the danger of lukewarmness. It sets in on any person or any church if they reach the spot where they feel like, well, now I don't need to go any farther. You're asking too much. That's far enough. 
If Abraham would have said that, if God called him, if he would have said, now look, when God asked him to, to slay his son, he could have said, now Lord, I left her of Chaldees. I've left everything, friends, family. I've followed thee. I've come to Canaan, lived in Canaan under difficult situations and problems. But this is far enough, and I refuse to go any farther. Immediately, he would have been in a state of lukewarmness. So, it seems like that lukewarmness, as I said, is far better along uh, than coldness. But God said, I would rather you would cold. Why? Because a man that's cold knows he isn't where he ought to be. And a man that's cold, it means that God can get at him. Lukewarmness is a state that God can't get at. He can get at the hot man, and he can get at the cold man, but he can't get at the state of lukewarmness, and that's why he said, I'll spew you out because I can't get at him. I can't reach him. God can't reach lukewarmness. It's a state of where they feel like I've gone far enough with God. I don't need to go any farther. God can't do anything with that man. If he knows he isn't as far along as he ought to be, if he knows he isn't where he ought to be, God can get at him. And God can do something with him. And if he's hot, God can do something with him. You can't help a person who doesn't know they have a need. Lukewarmness, it says in this church, they said we, have, we don't have a need. And you can't help a person who doesn't know they have a need. You can't help them. If they come to church and feel like they don't have a need whatsoever, you can't get at that person. You can't give advice to an individual who doesn't know he needs advice. But lukewarmness often sets in on people who have everything they need. This is why Brother Helm said to his daughters when they moved into their new home, he said, we're going to have to pray harder now than when we, had, when we lived under circumstances with our in-laws and just in one room. He said, now that we have this beautiful home, we're going to pray harder than we ever did to, to keep our spiritual life. That's a strange thing. If people don't know they need anything, God cannot get at them. So I'm trusting God will help us. Now, this is the only church, this Laodicean church is the only church that God didn't have anything good to say about it. He did not have one good thing, but I want you to notice they had a lot of good things to say about themselves. Oh, if you could have heard their yearly report at the business meeting. I want to tell you what all we've done. Uh, we've done, we've accomplished this, we've accomplished, because God says, you say this about yourself, that you're rich and have needed, this, what, this is the report you have, but the report I have is different. So, lukewarmness is the hardest person in the world to get at. You, can't, you can get at a hot or cold person, but you cannot get at a person Who's lukewarm? Now, I want you to know here that if a man is cold, he has possibilities. If he's hot, he make a good Christian. But a lukewarm person never makes a good Christian. Actually, the person who fought Jesus often makes the better Christian than a person who's just an indifferent individual, and you get them to confess Christianity. They many times do not make a good Christian. Look at the Apostle Paul. He fought Christianity. He hated the name of Jesus. And I want you to know when he got saved, he was just as much on fire for God as he was against him. And yet isn't it interesting, <clears throat> I might be wrong, but it seems like many times we go after the indifferent people. The really bad sinner we shy away from and uh, we're a little uneasy with him. But often they're the ones that make the best Christians if they really get saved. Like Sun, Sadhu Sundar Singh, the same thing of India. He hated Christianity. He, he burned his Bible and fought Christianity, but when God got a hold of him, 
I tell you, he was on fire from God from that until he died. He never let up. They fought him as hard as he fought Christianity. They fought him that hard after he got it. He was this kind of a man, this Sadar Sundar Singh, that went over the mountains, the Himalayas, barefooted in his little light robe. And uh, I mentioned before, I'm preaching about him. They maybe threw him in a dungeon and angels would come and let him out. And finally, in his last days, his last trip over the Himalayas, he left and never returned, and nobody ever found him. I some kind, sometimes wondered if the angels didn't take him on to heaven. Nobody ever found his body. Often, man who fights God the most will make the best Christian. But we are sometimes inclined to go after the indifferent person. Now, I want you to notice some of the warning starts. God said, Thou sayest that I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Now, I marvel at this, that a person could be poor, wretched, miserable, blind, and naked and not know it. That's what I marvel at is that they didn't know it. See, that's what lukewarmness says. They don't know they're in that state. And I marvel that you'd think a man, if he were poor, miserable, wretched, blind, and naked, that he certainly would know it. But they didn't know it. Because God said they do it. You know not that you're in that condition. So, lukewarmness here, I want you to notice that lukewarmness, that one of the dangers is when we begin to, when we begin to live affluent lives. Should I stop there? I'm saying this is dangerous territory. It doesn't have to be, but it's dangerous. That's why I wonder sometimes I marvel that God could ever start a Holy Ghost awakening in America. I really do. I, we have so much. So much to cause us to live in ease. So many conveniences. That for God to stir us up to go all out for Him, is, that's hard to get a hold of those people. Yeah. I mean, it is. Uh, it would be much easier for God to start uh, an awakening uh, in Russia, where they're going through hardships, or uh, in Africa, or some of these places where they've gone through hardships and difficulties. It would be hard for them. As uh, Brother Wright, James Wright, said in Africa, they stood for hours uh, listening to the gospel. Oh, I don't think you could get Americans to do that. I'm not sure that I'd do it myself. I think I'd have to sit on the ground. But here, in these conditions, having plenty, now I want you to notice, having plenty in material things often causes people to feel like they are the same spiritually. See, this they had plenty. And uh, so the, the difficulty is that having plenty in material goods often causes a person to feel like that they are just as well off spiritually. Uh, now, I don't know exactly why that is. You take, for instance, the rich young ruler who came to Jesus, and he said, Jesus said to give away what you have and give to the poor and come and follow me. He said he went away because he had great riches. Now, that's no pattern to follow. Because Zacchaeus gave away half of his goods, and Jesus said uh, he got in on half. So, because riches were not standing in his way. But here in this case, it's easy to transfer over the whatever we have physically or materially to feel like we have it spiritually. I think George Watson brings it out, that the danger... Uh, is that uh, once we profess certain spiritual words even to feel like we have it because we say the words. So the Laodicean church, they were strong physically and, and materially, but they missed spiritually what they thought they had. So it often happens that where we're strong physically or materially, then we begin to feel like we have the same spiritually. And this is, this is not so. This happened in Laodicea. They thought they were rich, but they did not. They thought because they had fine clothes that they were clothed spiritually. And they weren't. 
the scholars tell us that Laodicea was a medical center for eye treatment. And they had all they had eye treatment for those that needed that. And Jesus and God says here to them, Now, if you really want to see, buy me eye salve so that you might see. And he said, As many as I love, I rebuke. And I'm thankful for that. Sometimes the things that we are strong in is our greatest danger of being coming weak there. If you're strong in some point, you better be careful then, like the Bible says to him, to think of these standards, you better beware lest you fall. Let's uh, take a person, for instance, who has a brilliant mind. And I think in America, all of us, so many of us have been educated and and in a sense, compared to the rest of the world, we, we would say our minds are pretty good. And, uh, but the pr problem with having a brilliant mind is to think that we see things spiritually. We live in America. We're educated. We have fine churches, affluent living, and our beautiful cathedrals. And it's very easy to feel like we're spiritual people in America. But when we have educated minds, brilliant minds, I want you to know that it is a real struggle to become like a child. What Jim, Brother Hill has been trying to tell us, to preach on being converted and become like a child. I want you to know it's hard to become like a child if we think we know the answers. That's why Paul the Apostle said, when I am weak, then am I strong. Isn't that something? That's a hard verse to get a hold of. When I'm weak, we don't want to become weak. As somebody mentions a scholar, I notice here too that there are three doors here mentioned. One is the door that God opened. No man could shut. The second one is this lukewarm door and God stands at the door and knocks and you have to open that door. Nobody will open it. He won't open that door. You have to open it. The third door was the door that was in heaven, which shows us the beautiful situations there. And to him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. So, dear ones, the greatest danger, and I'm not preaching this church to this church because I think you're lukewarm, but it's a danger to us all that we don't reach that spot where we feel like, now, I, with this church, we've gone far enough, we've given enough, we've gone to the Holy Land enough, our past has been gone long enough. Mm -hmm. When we reach any of these spots, there's a danger of slipping immediately into the Yes, sir. Switch. Yes. And I'm trusting that we never reach the spot where we feel like yes. in any of God's leadings that we've gone far enough. Help us, Lord. Oh, I trust we never do. I trust we never reach that spot because that's the spot of lukewarmness where God says, I'll spew thee out and not use thee. Think of that, not use thee after you've come this far. Oh, I pray that God will help us, that whatever God says, we'll say amen, and brethren, we'll say, brother, here's another challenge from God. We'll try to make it. Whatever it is, we'll try to make it, and we'll stay hot for God and not drift into lukewarmness where he'd have to spew us out. 